I'm Reese Williams. All right. Uh, Gloucester Arts on Main has an exhibit that is, and now that I'm looking at these pictures of the different galleries, is absolutely amazing. David Lee is the principal artist of Hatton Cross Steampunk. And in the stu- he is on the phone from Georgia. Good morning, David. Good morning, Neil. Good morning. And Good morning. Grace Aldana is in the studio. She is the events coordinator at Gloucester Arts on Main. Uh, David, uh, before we even try to describe some of these things, I've got to ask you how you ended up ever getting started in steampunk. Um, that's a good question. I I, uh, I went to a science fiction convention with my daughter, who you've interviewed in the past about her books, and we were at this science fiction convention selling her books, and uh, that was the theme that year. And I just was completely mesmerized. You know, I like tinkering in the garage. I like gadgets and things, And uh, but I love the aesthetic of the, the late 19th century. So it just was, uh, I guess you could say, uh, love at first sight. <laughs> now, let me tell you, when I, when I look at your creations, and, and I hope that you don't take offense to this, but what, the first thing that I think of is what was, what was the TV show with the two guys that rode on the train all the time? Are you talking in the Wild Wild West? Wild Wild West, oh. yes! Yeah, yeah. I mean, is, that, is, is it kind of reflective of stuff that you saw on there, these crazy things that were created? Actually, I didn't see the TV show until after I saw the movie. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me that you were way too young. <laughs> well, I, a little Watch bit. it! <laughs> Easy. Um, but I have gone back and watched episodes because it, it is uh, amusing to see. And it, it is a, um, a fairly decent example of um, uh, steampunk. And But I think probably, and this is just my opinion, a better example is the movie, uh, The Wild Wild West. Just yes. Because... Your, your hero is Will Smith. They took uh, the character Jim Smith and they, re, you know, replaced him with Will Smith. So you, right. had, so you had somebody who, you know, an African-American who was the primary hero of the story. And that was kind of breaking a lot of the, um, you know, the social class system and, and the stereotypes that, you know, where people belong in society. And here you have a great example of, of what steampunk is because you have that aesthetic the science fiction aspect, and then you have the, the punk part, which is stuff that's kind of out of place, but inspiring. And if and if you and if you were, I could see when I think of the main character, or the main uh, villain in the Wild Wild West movie, and that contraption that he had, I could see that as something that you would have created for an art show. Oh God! If I could, if I had the skill, I would. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, uh, tell me a little bit. Like I'm looking at uh, an amazing. Uh, uh, I just got done looking at this Darth Vader gallery. <laughs> <laughs> An 18th, 19th century Darth Vader. Yeah, well, that's partially because I'm a, uh, a Star Wars geek. I love it, um, but. You know, one of the, the fun things about steampunk is the costuming aspect, you know, and they have these conventions all over the world, and um, and so, you you know, you make, you work on costumes and things like this, and one of the fun things is in steampunk is to take recognizable characters and then recreate them in so that they look like they're coming out of the 19th century. So, you know, what, what better um, mask and you know, robotic costume than Darth Vader, or character than Darth Vader. So I thought um, I would I would do that. Plus, I'm 6'4", so it kind of helps to be tall for that costume. <laughs> uh, uh, but, um, but you know, I, I so I built all of the, the costuming around more rudimentary and crude, but, you know, aesthetically pleasing, um, you know, prosthetic enhancements like Darth Vader's character. Um, and then the costuming is supposed to look, you know, more 19th century. Well, he's a gentleman, Darth Vader. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. A colonel. Now, I'm I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of welding in this. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm, are you forming a lot of this metal or are you taking things that are already a certain shape and adapting? Well, I started my own little, um, uh, and it's not something that I started, but what I, when I started building steampunk items, I had a very limited budget, 
and I really believed in repurposing found materials. So you'll see me at the uh, the various flea markets in Gloucester County and anywhere actually where I'm at. Uh, you'll see me at uh, the DAV, and and I'll be looking through and picking up odd items of brass and copper and anything that you know usually makes the the clerks or the salespeople go, "What in the world are you going to do with that?" <laughs> say, well, it's kind of hard for me to explain, um, and so I don't. But now with the exhibit, you can act, they can actually come and see all of the junk that I've bought from their um, <laughs> uh, flea markets and stores, and then they can actually see what I've done with it, which is kind of cool. The, it, but, um, it is truly amazing. It, 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 is everything in your exhibit kind of size-oriented? Because when I look at the pictures, it, everything looks large. Well... Um, Not you, I, I but do, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I do enjoy building um, larger projects. Um, if I build a backpack, um, or like there's a jetpack in the display. That's and the uh, Morgan Aeronautical Destroyer? Yes. Yeah, Neil. see? Yeah, yeah. Neil. I'm yeah. quick. I'm quick. <laughs> well, I initially called that the gentleman's flying apparatus, and then... Uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Grimm up in um, uh, Connecticut asked me to put it on display in a in the Mark Twain Museum in Hartford, Connecticut. And so I needed a uh, a tie-in to Mark Twain. And so I looked at a couple of uh, Mark Twain stories, and I wrote my own little story about it, which you can read at the art gallery. That's where the name, uh, the, or- the Morgan Aeronautical Destroyer of Satan's Arrogance comes from because it's tying in the Mark Twain story called Young Satan and the Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. And if you don't know those, go to the public library and, and check them out and read them. And, uh, and again, stuff. all of these uh, pieces that we're talking about, this exhibit is going on now at Gloucester Arts on Main. Well, st- starts the 28th? He already Actually, has uh, his exhibit up. Okay. What is happening the 28th? It's a steampunk soiree. All right, I'm almost <laughs> afraid to ask. <laughs> All right, uh, okay. A soir- a soiree is a fancy word for party. It's a okay, hotel. thank you. I was a little worried there. <laughs> my my limited well, trashy thought process had me going down a different road. <laughs> I will admit. <laughs> and that so is going to be coming up the 28th. It's going to include hors d'oeuvres, a cash bar, demonstrations now are 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 some of these things working oh yes um when i yeah when i build something i don't want it to just look good i want it to do things and and there's there's a principle that i use i call the two-year-old factor um i know that when i first looked at other people's steampunk art if it had flashy lights and movement and smoke I immediately reverted to a two-year-old and went, ooh, ooh. And so I, <laughs> yes, I, yes, I to, took uh, a drink of coffee. That was <laughs> I was going to say, you should make that right. noise again. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> well, it runs to, down my to, chin. When I, when, I make that, um, when I make art, I try to capture that two-year-old factor and then, and then evoke that in people because, you know, you want people to have a, a positive reaction to it. And so everything that I build, um, just about everything, has some sort of, uh, flashing lights and you know generate smoke or sound or movement and so part of the demonstration on the 28th will be we're going to show you um, the actual how the um, the engine works on the tank uh, we're going to show you uh, headlights on the tank we're going to show you some of the lights and and smoke you're not actually going to elevate with a Morgan aeronautical destroyer are you uh, no. Okay. As, you know, in fact, I, I commonly uh, or frequently refer to that as the uh, Marithew, um Support Fund. Because, <laughs> you know, anybody who's in Gloucester knows Dr. Marithew, the chiropractor. <laughs> that is a, that, it is a very heavy jetpack. It's about 40 pounds, and I walk around a convention with that, and I, I really... Uh, uh, work for it because that's a, a <laughs> I, I have to I have to tell you the the pictures uh, that I'm looking at are absolutely amazing. Uh, the exhibit is at Gloucester Arts on Main at this time, and uh, that is where Grace is the events coordinator. How did did you get tied in with Gloucester Arts on Main? Well, I started as doing a like an internship or volunteer work for them. So you started for free, is what you're saying, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. We all know the meaning of internship. Well, we used to, Diane used to come in all the time. She got a ticket right out in our parking right lot. Right in the parking lot, fact. yeah. So oh, you've, wow. got, you've got big shoes to fill mm-hmm. as far as entertainment Do goes. Do you get in trouble with the law often? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to comment oh. on that. Oh, okay, good. She, she would probably do great. Wait a minute. I can't actually comment on that either. <laughs> so how did you, how does David, did, did, did you go to David? Did David come to you guys? How did you find each other? You were at a flea market and saw him buy something weird and said you... <laughs> Look like you ought to have an art exhibit. You would think that's how it happened. Actually, his wife had did um, an event for us a while back, and I was looking through the contracts and came across David's card. And I said, I, I heard something about steampunk, and it seemed really interesting, and I thought it would bring some really great things to the gallery and especially to the area. Neil, his wife is Mish. Oh, no. Oh, that's who we're talking yes. to. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. No. It's, very, it's very rare that I ever escape the the um the boundaries of being the husband of the belly dancer. That's yeah, that's, that's a horrible thing. That though, would be really. a little difficult. But I honestly did not. And even though you and I had talked and you had mentioned that, it's not something I remembered. So as soon as Reese says it, all of a sudden the light it goes didn't. off. And it's like, whoa, yeah! I can't believe it didn't stick, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember so many things. I'll tell you what. Did you design the poster, David? Uh, yes, sir, I did. The, the poster is beautiful. The exhibit is going on now. Now, for, for somebody to... Now, I see on here... Hold on a second. I'm looking. I'm looking at the gallery on the ladies' flying apparatus, and next to it, it says "sold." I, I all of a sudden, it never struck me. You sell your pieces, also? Um, occasionally, not as often as I'd like, but <laughs> 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 I actually, what I, I mean, most of the things that I build, um, I, you know, I will sell for the right price. But uh, usually, it's more commission work. Somebody will ask me, "Hey, could you build me uh, a, a rum barrel gun?" And and I'll scratch my head and I'll think, okay. And then we, you know, we catch out some ideas and then uh, and then we build it. So I've built more. I sold more custom work than I have actual ready pieces. The, the, it is absolutely amazing to look at. And folks, this is this is an exhibit that you need to stop by Gloucester Arts on Main uh, and take the kids to. And anybody who has seen the Wild Wild West or the Wild Wild West movie. All of a sudden, you're going to look at this stuff, and you're going, whoa, yeah! I, because I have to tell you, until I looked at this, I'm thinking, steam, all this time I'm thinking, steampunk, what are we talking about? <laughs> and now, all of a sudden, the eyes are open. This is good stuff. This is really well, neat stuff. I have to say, too, for all of the steampunk things that I've seen, or even just art and creation in general, Dave is incredibly detail-oriented, so his pieces are impeccably clean and detailed and um, they are. just cohesive and uh, professional, and everything's just finished. It's and I fun. mean, even, it's even fun. the hats are interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You, you, uh, it's, you know, most people, first thing they do, they focus on goggles, but I, I'm a hat guy. I mean, I, I focus on the big top hats and and uh, so you can see two of my top hats there um one of them you know i i've decorated the other one i just bought because i couldn't uh couldn't go by it. It, uh, the, the one that looks like it has all of the the bronze work on it um the brown hat yeah um that's actually a husband and wife team in north carolina called organic armor that they take a wool hat, and then they decorate it with liquid latex, and they paint it, and it's amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'm also looking at Eli's Steampunk Nerf Mod. So that's Eric's yeah. son, who changed a Nerf, the orange Nerf gun into the Steampunk gun. Your son did that? No, Eric's son. Oh, Eric's son did that? Yes. Really? Yeah, that's yes. actually... Um, oh, there's the, his the picture. picture. I see mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll see Eric. And, Eric. Um, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> The uh, no, one the, one of the, the the best things about steampunk is that it's it's it has it's such a broad spectrum of things to to get interested in. So it it can appeal to a ten year old as much as it it'll appeal to an eighty year old because there's different aspects of it that they find appealing. But um, you know, there's there's the literary side, there's the art side, there's the contraptions and science, there's costuming. 
Um, and then there's the, the the main part of it, which is the science fiction piece. Yeah. And um, and so one of the you know first things that people do, well, they'll they'll modify uh, Nerf guns or water guns to to make a steampunk weapon. And <laughs> we did that with a couple weapons with uh, Eli there, and uh, he did a phenomenal job. In fact, if you want, you can purchase that large machine gun that he steampunked himself. Uh, Eric and I just kind of you know, guided them and helped them with the tools, but he did that all uh, all himself, and it's a really neat, uh, really neat gun. Well, ev- um, everything that I'm looking at here now does the uh, does the organ play? Yes, the the organ actually I got down in Virginia Beach. It was um, in a lady's house, and she wanted it out. It was collecting dust. It's an 1880-ish. You know, I don't know the exact year, but uh, it's roughly an 1880 uh, pump organ. So it has a bellows inside, and you you pump the uh, the two pedals that, you know, pump up the bellows, and then you can play it. I wanted to build myself a computer workstation for my iMac, and and so I, I had been inspired by a couple other people's uh, projects that I had seen. So I took the pump organ. I was very careful to not change the function of the pump organ, so it still works as that, but okay. it also is my computer workstation. And that's on display at the gallery as well. Amazing. Um, uh, let me ask you, Grace, For people can stop by the gallery anytime and come in and see it. Yes. Uh, your hours are what? Well, we're closed Sunday and Monday, but we're op- open until uh, 6 p.m. during the week. Now, if, if I'm just uh, going down the street and I, I pop into Gloucester Arts on Main, is there a fee for me to come in and look around? Not at all. Uh, so that I mean, that's the beauty of this. Uh, you could take a group of kids down to see this, or a group of adults, and then uh, the steampunk soiree and show. You're asking people to dress in their finest Victorian or steampunk costume and come out and have a good time. Uh, the exhibit is available the month of July, the future of yesterday, and this is going to be July 28th. Tickets are twenty bucks. That includes hors d'oeuvres, cash bar, demonstrations. Uh, by David Lee, Wicked Hips. So I'm guessing there's going to be belly dancing. Woo woo! Yeah, that's, what, that's Misha's dance troupe. And magician Larry Doc Volts. Have we met him? I don't know if we've had him on the show. Oh, okay. He's from Richmond. Larry. Larry is uh, a Newport News oh. um, uh, uh, guy who or grew up in Newport News, and he lives in Richmond now. And he is an amazing magician, but. His whole routine is is um, based on in the 19th century uh, uh, Victorian aesthetic. Wow! So absolutely hilarious, and so he's going to be there, and it's a really big um, coup for us, I guess, if you will, to get him to come out and be a part of the event. Because when you see his show, um, you'll completely understand it. It's um, phenomenal, phenomenal. And that uh, tickets are available at Gloucester Arts on Main. But uh, stop by, see the. I'm going to read the way it says here. See the fantastic display of creations from Hatton Cross Steam Pump, creators of fine accoutrements and contraptions of false perception. Great, yeah. great stuff, David. This is absolutely beautiful, and I hope you get a lot of people out well, there. Well, I also wanted to make an announcement, too. Um, for today only, if you come and get your tickets, if you buy two tickets, you're going to get $5 off. Okay. And anyone who's a member of Gloucester Arts on Main will receive 10% off of All their... Right. Stop by Gloucester Arts on Main today to get your tickets for the uh, steampunk soiree that is going to be happening Saturday, July 28th, but and also to get by there and see this exhibit. David, get back to work in Georgia. Where are you in Georgia? Or is it top secret? Uh, no, I'm at a, a class at Fort Gordon. <laughs> a class at Fort Gordon? Yeah, are you teaching it or class. taking it? I am taking it. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you're teaching uh, the military how to arm, st- uh, you know, put <laughs> copper armor on stuff. We need to look better as an yeah, army. We're, we're working on a new uh, experimental robotics Darth Vader suit for the army. Yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that'll be great. And it'll only weigh eight hundred pounds. <laughs> right, <laughs> David. Can I? Can I mention one more thing? Sure. One more things. Yeah. Um, there, there is a book coming out in January of 2013 called uh, International Steampunk Fashions by Lisa Lewis. Okay. And my daughter and myself are going to be in that book. Um, it's a coffee, t- uh, coffee table photo book of, of various steampunk fashions, and it's kind of cool that Gloucester will be represented in that book. Oh, it's going to be one of those big ones that you put on the coffee table. Yeah, and they, they make uh, it's 
Schiffer Publishing, and they do beautiful um, photography work okay. um, or, or printing. And I have a book coming out. It's a steampunk novel, alternate history, uh, coming basically around 1865 and the introduction of technology that doesn't belong in 1865. Okay. And uh, that's coming out through Hypatia Press, and it's uh, due to be released in November of this year. All right. We'll, be, uh, yeah, we'll, look, we'll look forward to you bringing a copy in, and we'll get you on the air to talk about it. I would love to. All right, David. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Talk to you later.